Have you ever heard of a mixture that uses only white PVA glue and silicone, but which, with a few clever tricks, can be transformed into something extremely useful and durable? Today, I'll show you how to make this combination and further enhance its properties, creating a product that can surprise you with its strength and versatility. To begin, I grab a simple container. Here I'm using a disposable cup, but any other container you have on hand will work, as long as it's sturdy and allows for thorough stirring. I pour a generous amount of silicone into it, the same kind used for sealing gaps, which is both durable and elastic. Next, I pour in the same proportion of white PVA glue, which is known for its adhesion and versatility. At this point, we have two distinct components, but the transformation hasn't truly begun yet. This is where the third element comes in, ethanol. The proportion is important. I use twice as much ethanol as the silicone and glue combined. This liquid acts as a diluent, breaking down the initial resistance of the components and allowing them to integrate evenly. As it falls into the glass, the ethanol infiltrates the silicone and glue, and gradually their textures begin to change. Please share your thoughts and comment on where you're watching from, your city or country. It's always amazing to see where this content is reaching, to meet the people who are part of this community, and of course, this helps me produce content that's increasingly aligned with you, wherever you are in the world. To speed things up and ensure everything is smooth, I improvised a tool, two clamps, a screw, and a wooden stick, all attached to a screwdriver. This creates a homemade mixer that spins quickly and forces the ingredients together. I turn on the screwdriver, and the noise already indicates that the mixture is taking shape. The edges of the cup begin to show a thicker, stickier liquid. It's a clear sign that the ethanol is doing its job, turning the glue and silicone into a single, dense, liquid mass. When this texture is uniform, I move on to the next step, which will change not only the appearance, but also the strength of the formula. I add the cement, approximately three heaping tablespoons, carefully scooping out the cement to maintain the exact measurement. As soon as the powder begins to fall into the container, it's as if it's immediately sucked into the liquid. With the base strengthened by cement, it's time to give the product personality. This is where paint colorant comes in, transforming not only the appearance, but also the identity of the mixture. Today I chose a bright shade of red, but the choice is entirely personal. You can opt for blue, green, yellow, or any other color that suits your purpose. The mixer kicks into action again, and little by little, the hue spreads evenly throughout the dough, creating an intense, vibrant color that brings the mixture to life and signals that it's almost ready to use. Finally, you can transfer all the contents to another, more practical container, which will make application much easier. Now finally, it's time to put this mixture into action. Before me is a rough, colorless, raw concrete sidewalk. I make precise markings with masking tape, creating divisions and patterns that will give the result a professional touch. To apply, I use a small roller, but you can also use a brush if you prefer more precision in smaller areas or difficult corners. I spread the mixture slowly over the surface, ensuring each section receives even and even coverage. The first layer adheres firmly, creating a solid base, although it has a slightly matte appearance, which is natural due to the cement in the composition. After observing the beginning of drying and noticing that the surface is well stabilized, I return to apply the second coat. At this stage, I use more controlled and constant movements, covering any gaps left previously and further enhancing the finish's strength and durability. The minimum drying time is about three hours, during which time I closely monitor the transformation. The color intensifies, the texture becomes more uniform, and the entire surface gains rigidity, ready to withstand long-term use. And while the paint dries, I'll reveal another surprising and useful trick, so be sure to watch the next tutorial as well. In this second tutorial, we'll learn how to mix solvent and styrofoam, a combination that, at first glance, may seem strange, but which holds incredible potential. On my bench, I have a clean, sturdy container with a portion of solvent in it. Now it's time for the styrofoam. Light, fragile, practically weightless, but with an impressive reaction when it comes into contact with the solvent. As soon as I dip the styrofoam piece into the container, something almost magical happens. It begins to shrink, 
deform, and within seconds, it completely disintegrates as if melting before my eyes. After dissolving all the styrofoam in the solvent, I'm left with a thick, viscous mass that looks nothing like the original materials. But we haven't reached the most important point yet. Now I add the third ingredient, white PVA glue. Without taking exact measurements just by eye, I add a slightly smaller amount than the resulting liquid volume of the solvent styrofoam mixture. Using a wooden stir stick, I begin to stir slowly, incorporating the glue into the viscous base. With each turn, the components gradually combine, forming a more homogeneous and full-bodied mixture. It's almost like watching a recipe change texture, but here, the final dish is something much more robust. To give the formula personality, I choose a paint colorant. I opted for yellow, but you can choose any color you prefer. A few drops fall onto the surface, forming irregular patterns that are quickly absorbed by the mixture. I stir again until the entire contents acquire a vibrant, uniform color. Now it's time to test this homemade paint. I have a raw wood surface in front of me, unsanded, without primer, exactly as it came. I want to prove that this paint adheres even without prior care. To apply, I can use a small roller or a brush. Anyone can do it. No special skills required. If you're not yet a subscriber, take this opportunity to join our community. Sign up now and stay up to date with all the news, tips, and exclusive content we've prepared for you. This way, you won't miss any new videos and you'll help us grow and bring you even more quality information. Don't waste time. Click the subscribe button and join this journey with us. I apply the first coat, covering evenly and without leaving visible gaps. Adhesion is immediate, and the finish begins to reveal itself, revealing a vibrant color. I wait approximately five minutes for the wood to absorb the paint fully, ensuring a stronger hold. Then, I apply the second coat, reinforcing the coverage and further evening out the tone. If you want a more intense, closed, and professional-looking look, you can add up to a third coat, enhancing the final result. After that, I let the piece rest for about two hours to dry completely. And the end result is impressive, a durable, vibrant paint made with simple materials you probably already have at home. The secret lies in the chemical reaction. The solvent dissolves the styrofoam, releasing the polystyrene, which creates a sticky plastic base. PVA glue adds flexibility and firmness, resulting in a durable, easy to apply homemade paint. Now it's time to show the results of my homemade paint for raw concrete. As soon as I remove the tape, the contrast is immediate. Uniform color, a beautiful finish, and a slightly rubbery texture that prevents peeling and allows for washing without losing its shine. The application was simple, but the effect is durable and moisture resistant. This is because the silicone creates a waterproof and flexible layer. The cement ensures adhesion and firmness, and the PVA glue bonds everything together into a stable base. The result is a high-performance homemade paint made with common materials, but capable of outperforming many industrial paints.